Welcome to Top Advisor Marketing, where you will learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your practice. Brought to you by Top Advisor Podcasting, a done-for-you podcasting solution built just for trusted advisors. And now, your co-hosts of Top Advisor Marketing, Kirk Lowe and Matt Halloran. Hello, it's Kirk Lowe here from Top Advisor Marketing. I'm going to be recording a podcast today for, uh, for you, our wonderful listeners. And today we're going to be talking about why your online reputation matters. And I have a guest with me today that I've known for years. I think uh, four to five years is the approximate time frame. Samir Samal owns and founded a company called Blue Ocean Global Technology. And he is an absolute uh, beast in SEO and online reputation management. We're going to talk about the difference between the two today. We're going to be real with how important this stuff is. And I believe that advisors and financial companies, for the most part, do not pay the credence to these two areas of marketing. I think, um, uh, so we're going to dive in. Anyway, Samir, it's uh, excellent to speak with you again. We have wonderful conversations offline. And I said, we've got to get this conversation online. So here we are. <laughs> Thank you, Kirk. It's uh, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here. And you know, what do you do when you want some information? Uh, we go to Google, and every second there are approximately sixty-eight thousand people who do the same thing. And indeed, our next story starts online. And just like ninety-three percent of online experiences do, it starts with opening a search engine and typing in a few words and that could be you know what is the closest or the best financial advisor in my area for instance yeah so you so i'm gonna cut you off because you have you wrote an article on your linkedin profile um, called seo versus online reputation management what's the difference and you have a story here called jenny's journey and i'm gonna do my best uh, to stay close to the mic here um and i'm gonna do my best here to um i'm just gonna read this script so imagine Jenny. She is director of a communication, uh, director of communications, and recognizes her company needs help with social media advertising. She goes online to search for digital marketing consultant and stumbles upon an interesting article on targeting online audiences. Jenny is interested and spends the next hour reading his blog. The first part of Jenny's story illustrates what search engine optimization or SEO can do for a business. SEO is an online marketing technique used to improve content and make it discoverable for search engines. Had it not been for the interesting blog post written and optimized for the phrase digital marketing consultant, Jenny would now, or Jenny wouldn't have known that the company existed. However, she is not ready to request a company training yet. Before buying, Jenny needs to learn more about the expert. She does a couple of quick searches on his name. Most of the results are positive, but his LinkedIn profile looks rather vague. Jenny then finds a review, three-star review that highlights a mixed experience with social media professional, with this particular social media professional. Jenny is confused. She is torn between her desire to request training for her company and her hesitation about the expert. So she turns to her LinkedIn audience and searches for her network's recommendations about freelance social media consultants. She also tweets to some fellow marketers whether they know this guy in question. This is a, this is so typical. If you think this is an outlier story, right, I'm off script here, this is, this is not. This is what happens every day. And a financial advisor is absolutely no different than the, than the social media consultant that Jenny is looking for. It happens all the time, whether you're referred it doesn't matter. This is what happens every single person that comes to you. And so, Samir, how, how does an advisor process this and move forward? Well, I think first and foremost, we have to think about, you know, the difference truly between SEO and ORM. And I think it's important to clear the air here because many of the successful advisors and financial services community, they were around – Kirk, a lot longer than before we were using email regularly. And so 
SEO, because Google algorithm has evolved so much, it almost is a dirty word. And people always laugh at that when I bring that up when speaking at an event, because it feels like kind of nobody trusts it and people have had a negative experience. So it's important to differentiate. I think online reputation management is an overarching term that encompasses everything that you're doing to build your online reputation. That can be your website, social media, reviews, blogs, video, uh, PR campaigns, whereas SEO is a foundational tool used within an overarching online reputation management campaign or strategy. And SEO will improve the visibility of a website through on-site optimization, and it'll also manage aspects of a particular keyword search. So uh, suppose you wanted to make sure that you know, the top 10 items for your advisory firm when they're Googled are featuring some of your best assets. You would use SEO to accomplish that, and that would then result in a better online reputation. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. Yeah. Well, SEO is kind of like the test. It's like the ultimate mm-hmm. test. It's like, I'm going to search you now, and everything I, it, for starters, does anything up about, come up about you, and the stuff that comes up about you is a good is it put you in the right light as far as that prospect is concerned? For advisors, that's it, right? That's just like old school, how it used to happen, which is somebody would maybe ask a friend about you or they just call your office and come and see you. And now it's all on you there. Now it's all on you with online reputation management and SEO. Uh, you're, you're bringing up a great point. Your best client talks about how much they love their investment advisor at a cocktail party and you know that friend that they tell and they say give them a call you know they're definitely going to look you up online and the firm before they call yeah so i i have i'm, I'm going to say this one thing i'm going to dive into how to solve this for advisors but i've long held this position that with a lot of referral marketing uh coaches or referral coaches for all marketing experts in in the financial industry in particular, that if you want to get more referrals, the most important thing is to be referable. And the second one is to inspire referrals. And for the most part, most people would tell you, you inspire a referral by asking for one. And I think that's a, a load of who. I think you inspire people by being somebody who is marketing all the time, generously. So sharing your thought leadership, and somebody who's exciting to want to introduce to people, right? So you're on social, you're out there all the time, and you have a voice and all those things. And, um, and then if you're doing that stuff, then this online reputation management becomes something that you can leverage. So how do, you, how do advisors and financial companies enhance their ORM, uh, which is online reputation management. And you have an, a wonderful article that you published that's called Seven Steps to Successfully Manage Your Online Reputation. And I was hoping for our listeners that you could go through those seven things. Absolutely. Let's cover those because I think one of the things that I love about your podcast is you're always providing actionable guidance. So I think the first thing, Kirk, is you have to Google your website and your name. So what is coming up when your firm is searched? Is there someone? Uh, dividend capital wealth advisors versus dividend capital. Uh, is there another firm that's populating? So somebody wants to read about you, but they're finding a different firm. And are the best digital assets that truly showcase who you are and how you help people are those populating? Uh, the second one would be setting up alerts. It's so simple, but you know this can both work in terms of managing risk and also uh, let you know about some positive things that are happening that maybe you wouldn't have found out about. So one is you can be alerted to when something related to your firm or your name is maybe coming up in search or is out there and published and you want to know about it. Uh, And also, uh, and I've had this happen often where people quote me from something they've read or heard and then they're, you know, publishing that and I wouldn't have known without those alerts. So Google alerts are free uh, and everyone should have them on their name and their firm's name or they should have a team member at their firm. Is there any other alert tool they should have or is just is Google the only the, the best one and the only one? Really? Yeah, there, there are a number of services. I mean, there's uh, TalkWalker and, you know, I think sometimes the granularity with these other ones, if you're not using the other features of these tools, they may not make sense in terms of the capital spend. Okay. But just at the baseline, I think, 
Google is the best uh, because yeah. it is free and essentially you want to know what's out there and that's kind of a baseline that everybody should be doing and you know there are people that can you give some examples of what an advisor might want to look for in an alert yeah well first off uh, you know and I've seen this happen where somebody at a particular firm is uh, you know maybe being quoted and it could be in an article that you know, is positive, but also could have a title that is a little bit questionable. Uh, also, with respect to alerts, you would notify if somebody wrote a particular review. Uh, I've seen people who have dealt with situations, Kirk, where, you know, sometimes names are common and uh, somebody had received a Google alert and their name is coming up as somebody with a regulatory disclosure and a notification, but it's actually another. A professional with the same name. Mm -hmm. so these are all things that if you learn about them as they happen, you can do something about them and be proactive in, in mitigating kind of some of that reputational risk that could be out there. Yeah. What do you call what do you call that that service again? Because I know that you do that. Yeah. Well, you know, I would say it's certainly monitoring, uh, but you know, fixing the things out there and you know, making I guess sure just fixing your online reputation, right? If something yeah. Yeah. That would be, I would think, reputation repair when you have things out there that maybe aren't favorable, that are that are old. I, I've seen whether it's advisors or lawyers, and you know they had a you know a citation a decade ago, two decades ago, and it's still yeah. showing up. Sometimes it's really them that did the wrong thing, or yeah. perceived to have done the wrong. Thing. <laughs> Perception's reality on the internet. That's yeah. both a blessing and a curse. It doesn't matter is what you're saying. If they did it or not, they're guilty. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, if someone looks up, you know, Kirk Lowe and they, f they find great things, but, you know, somebody finds something that's questionable, odds are they're probably not calling you and telling you about it either. Yes. People are definitely more aware that there's fake news out there, but they're more mm -hmm. willing to believe something that, you know, if, if there's a risk, why they're going to take it as a risk and they're just going to avoid you. So if that's happened to you, there's some, you, know, you guys can call, uh, certainly call. Samir, although there's better reasons to call Samir other than uh, worrying about that stuff. Anyway, so those were the first uh, two. What's the third one? So the third one is your Google local listing. So there's a Google My Business listing that is integrated with Google search. And you have to go through a process of optimizing that listing. And that's what you find. Like if you search Blue Ocean Global Technology on Google, you'll see to the right, uh, you'll find our listing, you'll find some photos, you'll find ours, you'll even find uh, reviews there. And of course, reviews are a unique topic to advisors that we can cover at another time. But that Google listing for your business is very important to help make sure that you're being ranked appropriately and your business is found in search. I know that I've um, talked to advisors before and, and um, even myself, when you look at, when you go in and you see those business listings in Google, when somebody clicks on your business or certain when they search it and it comes up, it's really wonderful when it's organized, right? That's part <laughs> exactly. of, your, part of your, your, the impression you're going to make. And guess what? That is a, that's an impression that happens before they ever get to your website, your thought leadership, typically. That right? is so true. They're, they're Googling it's you. Very important. It's like heaven. Mm -hmm. It's like, would you let somebody in your office mm -hmm. and have a horrible reception area and a beautiful <laughs> back office? If they got to walk through that reception area, you want to make that nice too. And advisors, you know, typically make sure that the whole experience from somebody walks into their office is wonderful. This is the yeah. same idea. You got to think mm -hmm. about this stuff. So mm -hmm. that's number three. What's number four? Yeah. And I would just also say that people, uh, you know, they visit your website and they may not ever come to your office and you may meet with them over the phone or over video. And so your online reputation or storefront uh, or shingle per se it does really impact whether someone sees you as credible. Uh, four is, is an active social media presence. And I want to demystify this a little bit. Social media, particularly for professionals, even financial services professionals, can be a little bit overwhelming. We've gone from kind of making jokes about what a tweet is on the news to, hey, you've got to have a Facebook page. And I think the most important thing in active is quality over quantity. You can be active, Kirk, by publishing... Uh, one article or you found something that a colleague or a thought leader wrote and you're sharing it one week on LinkedIn, another you're posting it on your Facebook page and another you're tweeting it. So 
Active doesn't have to mean that you're doing something every day, twice a day, even once a week. What it means is if somebody is a qualified investor and they're reading about your firm and they click on that Facebook icon or because Facebook has a high domain authority, it oftentimes will come up your Facebook page. Uh, are they finding some up-to-date content and something that truly represents your business or is educational in nature? Absolutely. And there's the, one of the more important things there is to have authentic content, which, mm -hmm. um, which is not the easiest thing for advisors to do, but if you can, or companies, but if you figure that out, that's huge. But I agree that uh, definitely quality over quantity is mm -hmm. really important. And another thing too, when you're posting, if you're sharing somebody else's um, thought leadership, mm -hmm. don't just share to fill up your social have, have a, a thought on it, right? Add, add some value to that. That's what people want. Um, you know, what do you think about this? That's where you're growing your thought leadership. You're just sharing what somebody else has said. You're, they're the expert and you're, you're not, right? And so figure that out. So that, those are the first four. So Google, your, uh, make sure that you uh, pay attention to, to the fact that people are gonna be Googling your website. Get some Google alerts in place. Uh, make sure that your Google local listings are uh, properly set up and then be active on uh, and have a social media presence. So number five. Number five is positive blogs. So those, it's very important because to rank your website and Google's algorithm prioritizes original authentic content. And so making sure that you're publishing about your expertise, that doesn't mean that it has to be a thousand words. I've seen successful advisors and entrepreneurs and they're just publishing a paragraph or two about a particular situation, about something they learned, about how they help somebody, but make sure uh, they're free of grammatical errors and they're uh, thought provoking and they're engaging. But having those positive blogs is certainly foundational and you know if you're a financial advisor for doctors or entrepreneurs and you're writing a little bit about that niche market uh, that can be very important and that doesn't mean you have to quote unquote give away the secret sauce it's really just sharing and letting people and putting out there that if hey somebody is looking for a qualified uh, advisor or firm and wow they see some of your commentary about a particular type of client that you help that can really be favorable yeah, so I, I agree that blogging is um, is a huge opportunity for advisors. Um, having been doing what I do, marketing for twenty years, I over the years I found only really a couple advisors who could commit to doing that regularly. And one of the most important things about being active is that you're you're consistent with that activity. That creates a lot of credibility, right? So what I would recommend is if you're if writing isn't for you, find something else. That could be a, a three minute video at your desk or it could be uh doing a podcast and that's why i podcast uh, i don't mind writing uh i enjoy it but i find writing is um i have to be in the moment whereas podcasting i can pretty much pull that off most of the time <laughs> our listeners may may have other thoughts about pulling it off all the time but I, you know i feel like i'm it's not that difficult to get into a zone with podcasting because talking is something that we're all more comfortable with than writing typically. Um, so, but you know, having that content, that authentic mm -hmm. content is, is huge for managing your online reputation. So uh, mm -hmm. on to number six, Samir. Yeah. And, and I would just say first and foremost uh, that if you're, whether it's you're writing a blog or you're podcasting, it's okay to have help and, you know, to collaborate, whether it's, you know, podcasting with a firm like yours can, help uh, do some of the heavy lifting, or if it's blogging, it's okay to work with a freelance writer or somebody that's experienced in that regard. Yes, excellent. So um, six, number six. Uh, we're gonna have to re-record that because I can't see the screen anymore. Oh. Because I just I don't have the list up or the outline. There we go. We'll just pause here for a sec. Our team will edit that out. So what's number six, Samir? zero hour response. Um, that means this notion, Kirk, that all the goodwill trust relationship capital that you have as a firm, I mean, people are entrusting you with their life savings, their wealth, uh, and that's very near and dear. So making sure that <laughs> you have that trust online is imperative. So when something changes, 
uh, when there's information that could compromise your reputation, when something positive takes place that maybe you shouldn't just post a paragraph or two, maybe you should think about a formal press release, making sure you're proactive and prioritizing your reputation and making that part of your digital presence has to be a priority. Yeah, I love the, uh, the wording there. Um, it, it intrigues you to want to read, or in this case, listen to what zero response actually means. Uh, I think I'm, I'm saying that because I think it's a great lesson to make up your own words sometimes and zero hour response. I think uh, I love that. Um, so what's number uh, seven, Samir? That's our, allocate our resources. final step, by the way. <laughs> yeah, the, the, is, is allocating resources. So, you know, price is what you pay, value is what you receive, Warren Buffett. And mm -hmm. sometimes we can be, as entrepreneurs, we can be shrewd and prudent, but we also can be penny wise, pound foolish. And the value of your reputation, if you have a firm that's growing and you're adding new employees is certainly more valuable than the salary or compensation that one team member receives. So instead of you know, looking maybe from the standpoint of, hey, how am I gonna you know, make sure I get a return? Recognize that ultimately you're trying to foster trust with your existing clients, with new clients, and if you don't allocate resources and recognize that your digital presence is working for you or against you at all hours, uh, then you may be missing opportunities to grow your business or have a higher conversion rate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, those are uh, seven really practical, and I'll say it, actionable uh, steps to successfully manage your online reputation. Um, I, I wanted to quickly, um, you know, create a little summer here, some, maybe some lessons, you know, for advisors is that online relationship management is a thing. Uh, it's not just for large companies as, as, you, as some of our listeners may have, you know, originally gone there in their heads. Oh, maybe this isn't for me. It, it absolutely is for everybody in this business. And it's a lot of online reputation management is about managing a perception but you have to have a voice and you have to have a story and a message to get all that out there. Those are really important things. Um, I call it, um, I, I like to say that advisors are competing and uh, in the expertise economy. And, and the question that advisors have to ask themselves is, are you actually uh, doing expertise marketing? And SEO and online reputation management is 100% part of expertise marketing, right? So you have to have that voice, that story, that brand, that thought leadership. You've got to be generous. Another lesson is that you've got to leverage the perception. And that's what this online reputation management is. That's what SEO is, right? It's getting your voice out there. It's making sure that when people are looking for you, you've identified how they would look for you. And you want to be able to show up as, as an option for them when they do that kind of search. And then you also want to make sure that you're, you're all over social media that you have a thought leadership channel and that you've employed these seven steps. You might not be able to do them all at once, but start figuring out how you can integrate these. If you've got an assistant or a marketing person that you work with, uh, talk about these, have a conversation, follow Samir because he's constantly coming out with ideas, thought leadership. He presents all around the world on these topics and more. Um, he's extremely generous if you haven't already figured that out. And I wanted to, quickly uh, note something that I know is really near and dear to Samir. And um, it's really important to me. I like to surround myself with people who are doing um, things outside of work that make them wonderful uh, people. And I read this article about um, that Samir put about global opportunity for higher education in India. And he had this amazing quote from Mark Twain, and this is from the 1800s, actually. Oh, well, that's when, well, that's when Mark Twain was around, as I, I guess mm -hmm. most of you would know. I wouldn't have been able to put his time <laughs> of life, but um, so this is a quote: "India is the cradle of human race, of the human race, the birthplace of human speech, the mother of history, the grandmother of legend, and the great grandmother of tradition. Our most valuable and most constructive materials in the history of man are treasured up in India only." Um, I'm, I'm not suggesting that everybody's going to agree, but it's a, it's a really um, wonderful uh, quote by Mark Twain. And India is this incredible 
um, place that I know is near and dear to you. And I know that you're doing some interesting things. So I thought I'd give you an opportunity to talk about a couple of different things that you're doing um, outside of work uh, that make you who you are. Yeah, thank you. No, and it's always fun because I've had the pleasure of educating on India at many venues here in the United States, including the U.S. State Department. And in the U.S., Kirk, I'm considered Indian-American. And when I go to India, I'm definitely just an American, <laughs> which is always a fun cultural juxtaposition. And in India, it's a, it's a very historic time period right now. Uh, I think sometimes people think of India, they flash back to Harrison Ford and Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom. But Today, uh, you know, India is a change place and you know, almost all major companies, including IBM, has several hundred thousand employees on the ground there. But what's so fascinating about education and young people in India is they're experiencing today, Kirk, the demographic dividend where there's 500 million people under the age of 26. So yeah, about, you know, 50% more than the people in the United States are young people in India and they're experiencing the industrial revolution and the digital revolution at the same time. And we have a sister company called Girl Power Talk that's dedicated to providing opportunities uh, as well as inspiration to young people. And, you know, genuinely, you know, when you go and you visit and I just returned from India uh, in December and you spend a day with acid attack survivors, mostly women, young women who have had acid thrown on their faces and it's literally melted off and they're partially or fully blind. And you get to spend a day with them and laughing, crying and making new friends. And, you know, you realize that all the things that are, you know, troublesome are, are just that they're, they're developed world problems. So I think India is something that's uh, near and dear. And I've, certainly been a voice for educating and sharing perspective on the country. And, um, you know, I think when you're thinking about impact, India is a place where, uh, you know, it's become a little bit more st uh, mainstream in terms of uh, people in North America traveling there and having an interest. And I'm certainly a, a passion and interest of mine. Yeah. I, I wanted to bring, I wanted to, uh, to make sure that I get you to talk about that and share that with um, our listeners, Samir, because I, I think that, when you're doing anything in life that's important to you, if you're not talking about it and sharing it, then mm -hmm. you can't bring a network of people together who are all going to contribute to whatever that good is. And I know yeah. anything that you do is never just about you. So maybe there's somebody uh, listening who, uh, who's, you know, can help whatever you're doing, make it better mm -hmm. uh, or want to be part of it or want to do something similar somewhere else and can, you know, give you a, a buzz or a ping online and ask you for your advice. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. it's been amazing having you around. I enjoy knowing you. Um, you're a, an incredible professional and the industry. I know you obviously work outside the financial industry too, but uh, it's wonderful having good and good people like you. Thanks for spending the time with us. Uh, this is another episode of, of Top Advisor Marketing and I would like you to um, all to subscribe so you don't miss wonderful gems like this when we, we speak with incredible people like Samir Samal. Uh, have a wonderful day, everybody, and uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Are you ready to change the way you communicate with your clients? Are you tired of being the best kept secret in your area? Learn how to become a prolific online influencer, attract more ideal clients, and grow your business. Contact us today and see what the power of podcasting can do for your business. Click on the contact us link on our website at topadvisormarketing.com and set up a call to learn more. Follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook for more updates and information. This was brought to you by iris.xyz, a platform helping financial professionals become better in business and life through new media and new voices. Visit them and learn more at iris.xyz.